All right, good morning, good morning, good morning. Um, we're now on day three, and I'm just doing my morning checks on, uh, on the fish. Today, what I want to really focus on is removing any more eggs that are what I call duds, ones that aren't gonna survive. Now, it's very normal, it's quite common to have um, an, a few eggs um, die off uh, just before they hatch, they're the weak eggs. Now, the first thing that I'm gonna do is just check my water temperature. So here's my thermometer. As you can see, my water is sitting at 12 degrees. So that is the temperature between 10 and 12 that I want to keep this water at. If my water goes above that, I will regulate it just with some ice. As you can see, I'm in a cold room. This cold room is well insulated and it helps to keep my temperature pretty constant. The other thing that I've done is modified these chopsticks. So for those who are not so versed with uh, chopsticks, very, very simple little technique uh, with an elastic band, piece of stick. And now what I've got is what I call child chopsticks. And <clears throat> if we have a look at our eggs, there's my feather. Just want to move them around, make sure. Now, You'll, if you see this egg over here, now that egg looks a lot whiter than some of the others. And the instinct is that I want to remove it. But what I'm actually going to do is leave it for another day. Now, these eggs have gone a lot paler. And that's what happens just before these eggs hatch, the outer shell comes off. And just before the shell is released, the color goes very, very pale. And so what I'd rather do is just leave it another day uh, just to make sure that it's not what I call a false positive um, and that egg will actually hatch. There's another one, as I was talking about. But otherwise, these eggs look good. There's no mold, there's no issues, so yeah, let's uh, have a look at the other ones. Now, if you look at there, that is a classic example you'll see the shell coming off. You see that? That shell is just starting to be shed. And that's what causes them to go that very, very white color. So that guy's gonna hatch out probably tomorrow. Um, and it's quite normal to get a couple that hatch out before the rest. And then the, the, the rest of them will all hatch after. Here you can see another shell has been shed. Over here. There. Piece of the shell. I have also tested my pH this morning. It is sitting at 6.5. Um, if that pH does go up or go down, I'm gonna show you exactly how we adjust it um, in order to, to keep it as maintained as close to that 6.5 as possible. But overall, very happy, looking really good. Um, we're gonna check on them again later. Welcome back. Um, so we're on day 10 now and what I want to show you today is what's happened over the last week. So we've been able to maintain my pH consistently at 6.5. My water temperature has been maintained at 12 degrees Celsius. As you can see in this cold room it's much easier for me to be able to regulate those temperatures. 
so I don't get the, the fluctuations. Now, after four days, these, the, the eggs hatched. And what you can see here is um, normally after I've seen all the eggs have hatched and I've removed my dead eggs, I take them out of the hatching tray. And the reason I do that is so that they can spread out. Now, one of the issues you will find, especially uh, when you're dealing with 20,000 eggs or 40,000 eggs, is that they tend to suffocate each other. And so that is the exact reason why I want to get them out of the, the confined hatching trough, like this one, into the bigger space. But you will still find that as we go, we're going to be losing one or two here and there. So what I've been doing this morning is really going through and identifying any dead ones. Because what you'll find is that you'll see how my fish all clump together. Now that is just a natural way of how they group. And if one dies, it will tend to cause suffocation on the others. So as you can see here, That one there, very quickly, if I put it into my little disposal, and you can have a look, you'll see that very quickly they get a fungus on them. And without removing that, that's what's going to stick to all of them. Now it's very, very tedious, and we spend hours and hours and hours each day, particularly at this time, moving them around, identifying any ones that haven't made it, and ensuring that we remove them as quickly as possible to ensure the health and safety of all the rest. So as you can see here, this tray I'm going to remove today as well, and we're going to release all of the, the babies back into the system. And then what I'll be able to do is actually show you how these trays are made up and how they're all coming together and how they're assembled. Um, my ammonia levels, my nitrite levels, my ammonia is currently sitting at 0, 0,05. My nitrite is sitting at 0, 0,2. Now, very, very common, because these fish are all ingesting that egg yolk, they are producing high levels of ammonia, which is converted into that nitrite. I have to keep a very close eye on that. I don't personally like it to go above 0, 0,5. If my nitrite goes above 0, 0,5, I have to do a water change. Uh, but I also know that I've got an incredible Motala filtration system on this hatchery and that should be able to help keep all of my major uh, nitrites and ammonia under control. And then obviously my nitrates currently sitting at about three, between three and four. Also a fantastic indication that my filtration is working. We're obviously looking for that ammonia to be converted. Now don't be fooled. Because these fish aren't eating yet, they'll only start eating once the egg sac itself has completely been ingested. But as they are consuming that egg yolk or that egg sac, there are high amounts of ammonia that are going to be excreted uh, off the back of it. So I'm going to spend the next hour just making sure that all or of any potential duds are out. And as I mentioned, there is no way to automate this. There is no way to fast track this. Um, it's an incredibly tedious job sitting, monitoring, and removing any bad uh, eggs or fish that are in my system. So we'll be back again in a couple days and we'll monitor and we'll monitor these fish as that egg yolk uh, goes off and then they'll be starting to feed, which is a really exciting time. And then what we're gonna do is, is still leave them in here for about three weeks um, until they are strong enough to be moved into my nursery. My name is Justin. Thanks for joining us. Have an awesome day and we'll see you again in a couple days time. Cheers.